Coming up next in the program... New names on the cover. Welcome to a new edition in our New Names on the Cover series. I'm your host, Eugen Nasta. The Bifrost publishers literally straddles two cultural spaces, the Romanian and the Swedish one. According to the publisher's English version of their site, we quote, Bifrost is a publishing house that aims to create a bridge between Romania and Sweden, between the North and the South, between two diverse and extremely interesting cultural spaces, between people who speak different languages but have a common passion, books. Unquote. Scandinavian mythology is generous and still rewarding. It is also a source of inspiration for metaphors, updating their reference and adding a traditional touch to the modern edge of a literary undertaking. Also according to the English version of the site, we quote, the arched bridge of the Viking beliefs is called Bifrost. Recently, an anthology of young and worthy debut writers, poets and fiction writers, has been brought out by the Bifrost publishers. A book through which 26 beginner authors will delight readers with 76 literary texts, very diverse and interesting poetry, short prose and plays. You are listening to Radio Romania International. My first guest was the publisher's PR manager, Maria Dragomir. When it comes to compiling an anthology comprising works by up-and-coming writers, we're definitely spoiled for choice. I first wanted to find out from Maria Dragomir how she went about selecting the young authors for the anthology. I tried my best to avoid the word criteria, which to my mind is way too stereotypical for such a refined undertaking. There were indeed many up-and-coming writers who sent their works for this compilation, but not as many as you think. Unfortunately, some of them would like to start their career as a writer, but at the same time they are looking for higher financial gains. However, talking about this anthology, we chose the writings according to their value and quality. Uh, that's why we proposed a jury formed of two experienced writers who are Carmen Foxha, Adrian Kostaki and Daniel Onaka. The first two are part of the Writers Union of Romania and uh, the last one is a Swedish writer. The young author's writing makes a wide range of poetic voices. Different as they may be from one another, do the authors have a running thread the coordinator has pursued as he was compiling the anthology? Here is Maria Dragomir once again with the details on that. Neither the authors nor the coordinator has pursued a running thread. The jury simply analyzed the writings according to their quality and value, certainly not according to their themes nor the main ideas. However, the selected works definitely do not violate the norms of ethics and morals, and that's why we chose them to be part of this anthology. Among the poets included in the anthology, Ioana Tudor is very keen on the technique of writing as such. There certainly is an appreciable amount of tension in her elliptical verse and her run-on sentences, enjambament in Romanian, a word coming from French, enjambement. I first wanted to find out from Ioana Tudor whether technique was important in her writing or whether the way she wrote was a mere outcome of the feeling she charged her poems with. Ioana Tudor. I don't think I've ever thought about using a certain technique while writing. My poems are written in the way my feelings felt like expressing themselves best. Most people don't have a one-track mind, but ever-changing sentiments. In this view, my poems are a dialogue between me and my feelings, as well as the feelings themselves. At the point when the run-on sentences go on to the next verse, it is often that that particular feeling is either stronger or that it's slightly fluctuating, like waves or a river. To me, poetry is an escape, a method to express myself, and even if the core is still the same, a person is ever-changing, evolving and having new ideas. As such, even if I chose to try using certain techniques one day, they would probably end up not anywhere close to the initial idea. 
Honestly, I wasn't even aware that the way I write my poems is actually a technique or that it has a name. Indeed, feelings are the most important part of my writing. They ultimately decide how a poem is written. Quite surprisingly, poets of the younger generation do have a credo. I also wanted to find out from Joanna Tudor what she still believed in as an up-and-coming writer in terms of ideas or as regards the powerful message she conveyed to her readership. Here is Iwana Tudor once again, with details on that. I'll once again be honest and say that I've only recently started thinking about what kind of message I want to convey, because I've mostly written for myself and maybe a couple of friends. Most of my poems nowadays end with the idea that no matter the hardships one goes through, there is always a ray of hope. Generally speaking, I believe that poets should be sincere in their poems and write about their own experience or their own beliefs and ideas. We should reach out to people and help people that resonate with what we write. I personally believe that the time has come when we call things by their names and don't try to hide behind complex wording and grand techniques. But that might be just me. Every person has their own voice. In this view, I think everyone can write and should try writing and expressing themselves through poems or stories or the form of art of their choice. The world needs more voices and more stories. After all, this is what makes the world go round. Alina Pinta's poetry is different from Ioana's. Witty interrogation is the strong point of her poems. I asked Alina whether that went with the flow as she was writing along, or whether that mainly was an intellectual quest of the young poet she still was. My writing process can differ from one poem to another. I can be inspired by a memory and start writing, or I can be asking myself some questions I don't even know the answer to. I can be unexpectedly drawn to a picture and build an idea around it, but mostly I notice that I'm driven by questions, things that make me wonder and ponder, even not take everything into account, but rather search for the mystery behind it. I'm also intrigued by various subjects and through my poems I share this curiosity with the readers. I don't necessarily expect a clear answer, however, I like to think I leave some room for a quiet contemplation through imagination and possible scenarios. I think curiosity is one of my most obvious personality traits, therefore the questions in my writing come as a signature that point that out. After all, I'm thinking, what would us humans be without wandering? So curiosity comes in as a fuel for innovation and evolution, so it can push humankind further. The deep fusion between the poet's voice and the world generates a seminal lyrical tension in Alina Pinta's poetry. Was that the core of her writing, or was it just an element among other themes in her poems? Alina Pinta once again. The lyrical tension in my poetry, I think that is an element among other themes like nostalgic memories, motherhood, love and the beauty that comes with it, time, hope. Life is a wonderful experience, all in all. I'd say the tension might come from the big gap between the reality and the imaginary. But then again, the miracle of the imaginary rises precisely out of this discrepancy. I'm writing about things that can convey an emotion. It is my main focus during writing, so how can I be able to strip so many thoughts till I reach the raw emotion? I believe emotions can stay with us, can last longer in our memory, if we are vulnerable enough to deliver it with the right impact. Our guests in this week's New Names on the Cover were Bifrost Publishers PR Maria Dragomir, as well as Ioana Tudor and Dalina Pinta, two of the young authors included in the anthology Debut 2021, brought out by the Bifrost, Bifrost Publishers, based in Bucharest, but also in Sweden. For Radio Romania International, I'm Eugen Nasta in Bucharest. Thank you so much for being with us. Bye for now.